Hello everybody and welcome to my review of the light novel Yume Niki, I Am Not In Your Dream by Akira. This one is released by J Novel Club. It's only available in ebook format and it is a single volume. Uh, there are, It isn't a series, which is a little bit unlike what we have mostly, but this book is very unlike pretty much everything we have. So Yume Niki is, was originally a video game and funny enough was created using RPG Maker many years ago, if you're at all familiar with that. It was a sort of RPG in a box program that allowed you to make RPGs, a pretty straight ahead title. Um, and this one particular game that was created was a very open to interpretation game in which you played as a single silent character who explored these varied and in some cases horrifying dreamscapes. And in a lot of, pretty much overall, it was left up to the player's interpretation in terms of what the story was actually about. The game really never actually came out and said. And funny enough, uh, I'm reviewing this light novel, and as I was reading it, it was just announced that Yume Niki is being released on Steam, that it's now available to play in a open and easy accessible format, which is kind of a good thing, I think, and uh, I'm going to get a little bit into that. So the book essentially is trying to come up with a story that explains just what the heck you are experiencing in the game. It follows the same format. It follows this character, sort of you, you go through all these weird dreamscapes, have these strange things happen to you, you encounter odd characters. Uh, the book initially is very much, it reminded me a lot of very old sort of text-based video games where in order to try and engage you as a player, they always would refer, you find yourself here, you move forward and discover blah, blah, blah. And that's exactly how this book is initially written. And the narrator who is sort of telling you these things, you do get the impression, I mean, very quickly that unlike those original text games where they were trying just to involve you as a person, this is still being said to a character who isn't you. <laughs> the narrator is talking to another character in the story, which is the character that is going through the sort of dreamscape. And ultimately this book, whether you become invested in it or not, is going to be about whether you care to find out just why this weird sort of dream world exists. What is it trying to tell the character? And whose dream is it really? Because there becomes, that becomes pretty muddied as you start getting into the book. And ultimately this book tries to give an explanation about what Yume Niki is actually about. Now, what's kind of interesting is, is that uh, I read an article where basically the company that is distributing Yume Niki has stated that the book is not considered canon. It is not the be all and last word on what the story actually is. It is just one interpretation. So they're still sort of leaving the game open for everyone to experience for themselves. Now, with the book, I kind of have to say that I felt that playing the game before you read the book would be actually really beneficial. I mean, I so I walked into this book and I, I knew just really a little bit about what Yume Niki was about, I, pretty much just by reading articles about it, because I was kind of curious, like, you know, what is this game that this thing is based on? And so I really, the only experience I had was the book. The book is very interesting. As I said, obviously it's written in a very different way than most light novels. The imagery is very evocative. Uh, at times the writing is almost poetic in the way that it is done. Uh, the, the imagery is 
so varied because you're going through all these different sort of dreamscapes and just like a dream a lot of it is very disjointed it doesn't necessarily one sort of experience doesn't necessarily flow smoothly into another um you know you don't have a world that gradually shifts from one sort of environment to another instead these changes are sudden and random and and at times it gets into this, it starts to take a look at Freudian and Jungian dream interpretation, with, which I have to say at times was interesting, but then at other times I almost felt that it was just put in as psychological techno babble to try and justify the author's point of view as opposed to actually getting in deep and uh, applying these theories to the story, the, the game, whatever you want to say. Uh, as I said, there were times where it was insightful, it was interesting. Uh, I did go through a period where I was kind of very curious about Jungian thought. Um, so I kind of found that engaging, but there were times that I kind of sat there and going, like you're reaching a little bit. Or there were times that I thought there were missed opportunities where they would start getting into something about a Jungian theory and then would just kind of fail to totally connect that to what was happening in the book. Um, ultimately, too, there were some points in the book where, because I have not played the game, I felt that it was kind of reaching a little bit. Like, one of the dreamscapes or the situations that the character finds themselves in is in a spaceship with a space alien. And it is the most out-of-the-blue, odd situation in the whole book because everything else is this very visceral and, and at times disturbing imagery. And then all of a sudden you have this spaceship and an alien, a very stereotypical alien. It just seems really out of left field. And I have to say that was the one environment that took me right out of the book. I, I was, I just was like, whoa, what I, what? That makes no sense with anything else that's happened. And again, I think that that, that probably happens in the game. That environment is probably in the game. Um, I can't imagine why the author of this book would have just randomly shoved it in there uh, otherwise. Uh, and I think that that's kind of the thing. Like, the book does work. If you don't, if you haven't played the game, the book does work on its own. I think there will be moments where, as I said, you'll be taken out of it because you'll be questioning just, why is this even here? Like, it didn't need to be here if you were writing this story like on your own, you probably would not have included that. And so you kind of feel like it's been shoehorned in there in order to address all of the different environments that exist in the game. So there are times where the story flows very well and then there's other times where you just kind of scratch your head thinking to yourself like, why? Oh, it's probably because it was in the game and the author had to try and shove it in there because otherwise fans would have been angry because you left out this or you left out that. So there are those moments where the book feels a little disjointed um, or that there's things that just don't seem to really belong. I kind of felt that the end of the book is intriguing and an interesting spin on things. Again, uh, I think it's a decent ending for the book, but I think it would have had been more impact on me if I had played the game and had sort of developed my own theories on it, and then as I was reading the book was sort of comparing my experiences with this author's interpretation of those experiences, I think this book really would be better as a companion piece to the game as opposed to an entirely standalone experience. Again, is it terrible? No, actually, I, you know, I relatively enjoyed it. And as I said, the the difference of the imagery and everything else was, it was intriguing to me. And I did find myself kind of wondering what was happening. I mean, the, the story is structured, the book is structured in sort of three parts where the first part is where it is talking about you. The second part where it sort of focuses on just who this narrator is, what role they play. And then the third part is kind of like where you get into a lot of these sort of psychoanalysis uh, analysis and so forth, where they try to break down and, and really get to the root of just 
what has caused this dream world to come into an existence and, and why is it filled with these elements of sweetness and horror and, you know, joy and pain and everything else. Like, why is that? Why is it the way that it is? And I found myself very intrigued to find that out. And again, so I think it works, but I, I can't help but think I would have gotten more out of it if I played the game. And with the game, as I said, now being widely available on Steam, uh, I can't really see any reason why, if you're really intrigued by this book, why you wouldn't treat yourself to a couple of hours and give this game a whirl and sort of see where the basis of all of this comes from. I, I really do think that overall, your enjoyment of the book and what you get out of the book will certainly benefit from that because as like walking into all these different environments, I don't think I had the same emotional, I think it would have been cool to have that emotional uh, reaction of, I remember doing that, or I remember playing through that area. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that would have created a, a closer connection to the story because the book is really about diving into somebody else's psyche. I think there's a little bit of a barrier of feeling a bit detached from it because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not really there. And because the character is going through such disjointed things and because there is not really a clear path that's being traveled, it, it at times feels a little hard to be as emotionally invested in it as I think you would be if you had played the game, had your own interpretations and wanted to compare. So, um, so overall, you know, like Yume Nikki is a, it's an interesting light novel experience. It's very, very different, obviously, from pretty much everything. Uh, again, as the, the way that it's narrated, uh, is, is very different compared to a lot of stuff in that at times it feels like it's talking to you, but really it's not really talking to you. It's talking to somebody else. And and the role of the narrator is a bit different in this book as it would be compared to a lot of other first person uh, type light novels. So I would say it's worth a read. Um, again, I would say play the game first if you feel so inclined. If you don't, I don't think that the book suffers horribly for that, but definitely uh, I think that you're going to experience that little bit of emotional disconnect on it. And there will be certain points where you're just kind of questioning, like, why did the author make that choice? And I really think that the answer would be because it's in the game. And so I, I think that there's that little bit of takes you out of the book at th those moments because there's no anticipation that that's going to happen because you haven't played the game. So those are my thoughts on Yume Nikki, an interesting book with lots of really crazy and engaging scenery, but uh, I still think it, it would be better not standing on its own exclusively. I may just pick up the game myself now that I've read the book and maybe do it the other way. Like now that I've read the book, play the game, but I'm kind of afraid that the having read the book and that interpretation of it is going to really sort of color my own experience of the game and, and maybe hamper my own sort of imagination because there will always be that in the back of my head. I don't know, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Do you guys think I should stream something like that? I don't know if I'd even be allowed to. Game streaming is such a weird legal thing on YouTube. Anyway, those are my thoughts on that book. My next review is going to be on volume number four of Konosuba. Uh, I know there's like a bunch of books that you guys have been harping on me. Dude, you have to, to please read these books. And and I know and I want to get to them, but uh, I'm kind of looking at my massive pile and I'm sort of looking at books that are maybe a little shorter and thinking to myself, maybe I should just power through and do a bunch of reviews in like a week and a half and get this pile sort of decreased because, man, it's it's kind of bumming me out how many books I have left to read. So, Konosuba volume number four, because I'm bummed out, I'm going to read something funny. That'll be my next review. So, if you love light novels and you're brand new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. I do two to three reviews every single week, as well as a weekly countdown of the top ten best-selling light novels in Japan. If it's light novels, this channel's all about it. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.